weight into it. Come on, get to the base. <gasps> you won't want to see no tats for a week. Just a bit dazed. It'll be all right. It's not too bad. How do you feel? You ought to charge more rent. I don't mind telling you, Mrs. Hammond. When I first came here, I thought I'd fallen easy. I don't want a list of my shortcomings. I'm only trying to show you where you're hurting yourself most. Can't I talk to you just for once as a person? If you listen to what I have to say, I could really put you right. I wish you wouldn't try and work me into a fit. I've asked you before to leave me alone that way. I can't stand it. How do you feel, Frank? You won't be able to shoot your mouth off like you used to. <laughs> At least not for a few days. Can you fix me up with a dentist? Well, I don't know it. Christmas, you know, Frank. I want it tonight. Well, I, I can try. Tonight. Come on, you lot, let's have you out. How do I look? I've seen worse. Go on. You try. You're going to Weaver's party tonight, Frank. I've been counting on it. I'd live well alone if I were you. Weaver and parties. I get your mouth seen too fast. It's more important. How's your Mrs. Ammon? She's all right. I bought some presents for the kids. The bitch won't like it, though. He doesn't like me interfering. Hello, Frank. How are you, lad? Not now, Johnson. I'm in a hurry. Uh, Mr. Weaver. Yes, George. Frank Freddy, whenever you want him. Oh, good. How's it going, Frank? I'm all right. Hello, Morris. Well, are you coming in the car, too? No, oh, I wouldn't miss seeing Frank in the chair. Might even get a camera. <laughs> you can put your little doggy in the boot, George. Right over, Mr. Weaver. What about your little dog, Frank? Go on in, Dad. That's not very funny. Let's have a look at you, then. Oh, it's not me, old lad. It's Frank here. Right. Come on. I've a member's ticket. That'll be how you trace me. Haven't seen much this season. Sit yourself down. Mm, it's a mess. I'll have to come out. Six of them. That's all I can do. Well, hasn't uh, Weaver a race to pay, eh? Well, that's not the point, I'm afraid. He'll need a plate. What of it? I can't go making plates for him. 
It's in the children's department. Our kids are false teeth. I know a couple of. Do you? All right, you do the pulling. Get your mate to do a plate. We'll pay. Never mind, Weaver. There's no party here. Let's get on with it. Ah, you see, he's in pain. It'll be ten guineas. Ten guineas? Take it and leave it. Come on, whatever the bloody price. It'll have to be gas. Have you eaten recently? And that's finished my dinner. Right, would you mind waiting outside? Put your hands in your pockets. That's it. Sit tight. You'll feel nothing. Breathe deeply. Sit tight. Keep your hands in your pockets. You'll feel nothing. I've been thinking. Why don't we go for a walk? What do you want us to go walking about in the bloody pitch dark for? Well, I like to talk to someone when I'm walking. You know, your problems, they're sort of... You have plenty of friends. Hey, look at this funny man. Here, you play with it. You must be mad to think I'd go out there walking with you. I don't want you poking your nose into my affairs. You won't find me poking my nose into yours. I have some pride left, if you didn't know. Don't you want to be happy? If I'm left alone, I am happy. I don't need you pushing in. I'm not pushing in. I'm just trying to be friendly. Well, I'm not going about all day with a grin over my face just to make you think I'm happy. I don't mean laughing all the time. I mean, you just don't look happy. It's not, it's not a question of laughing all the time. You make me sick. All right, I am sick. I'm bloody sick of living here and all. Mr. Machin, that's easily settled. Don't. Just stop living here. We'll be better off without you. from another winning team, of whom we're all very proud, our City Rugby League team! It's on with the dance. It's 
and gentlemen, excuse me, and may the best man win. <laughs> General, excuse me. Do you want a thumping, love? Hi. Well, you better come outside and excuse me there. I wanted to ask you. Oh, what's that? Your name is Johnson, isn't it? Ah, yeah, that's right. You're a scout for the city. You could say so. Can you get me a trial? Ah! Uh. Now, wait! Wait a minute, lad! Why don't you come and see me play? I need someone to cheer me. You can cheer yourself. You won't catch me up there freezing to death for an hour. It's me first game. A lot depends on it. You don't have to do it. It's a job. If I play well and they sign me, I might get three or four hundred quid. I'm sure they'll give you all that. Well, that's just the sort of encouragement I need. Come and see. I'd like you to come. If I wanted to go, I would. I've said it. I don't want to. Wish us luck, then. All that's coming your way. I don't wish you my luck. I'll have to make do with my own, then, won't I? What's his name, Wade? Uh, Mitch. Uh, Frank Mitch. Oh, Charles. Yeah. Hello, Charles. Charles. Get up. Oh, that's good. That's good. Oh, 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 Bloody ball at future, you nut. It's stuff. Ha! 
Smash the ball, man! Bloody hell. Hey, Gower, why are you playing at you bloody frog? Him. You can tell that to it, rugby league chairman. Look, I swear to God, I never touched him. Look at the bloody fist, there's no blood on him. Go on, get off. Just don't beat him, are you bloody yeah. hell? He's not fit to be on a football field. Aye. You've got the wrong man there. You think so, Mr. Sloan? Of course. It's plain as the nose on your face. That's not what I call football. It's a rough game, Charles. Personally, I like to see a man playing as if he really meant it. Blinder, Frank. You played a blind. You enjoyed it? Oh, well, come on, lad. They'll be all over you. I was sitting right in the middle of committee. Don't get excited, Dad. Come, I'll buy you a drink. What are you having? I'll have a beer. Two beers, please. Beer, sir. You won't find them no different from me, lad. Maybe they won't show it. Naturally, they won't show it like me. Allow me. What? No, allow me. I really do insist. A double bob. Well, you played a good game today, Frank. Aye, he played a blinder. I wouldn't worry about him, he's a bit soft. <laughs> How do you like the city? I'm getting the hang of it. Yes, I rather gathered that. Pity about Taffy Gower. What about him? They've taken him to hospital. I believe it was a broken nose. You know, for a little fellow, their hooker packs quite a punch. It's bad luck. Yes, it is. You haven't signed on here yet. No, they haven't made their minds up yet. Well, I don't think they'll find that too difficult. Do you? Goodbye, Frank. Who was it? You know, Frank. Who was it, Dad? Guess. Go on, have a guess. Who was it? That's mean, Frank. That's mean. Who was it, Dad? That's mean. Why did you squeeze my wrist like that? I don't know. Why? Was it Weaver? Yeah, me, you know. Just because it was Weaver. You get far too excited, lad. I thought you knew it was Weaver. I was surprised him talking to me like that. He must have been impressed. Do you think there's something? Aye.
want me to come home with you? It's no trouble. No trouble to me. Aye. I come if you like. Have some tea. Mr. Salmon won't mind. Bit of a coincidence, me knowing her husband. Yep. Not that well, mind. Maybe only a year before he died. I say, them's not his boots, are they? What you keep them for? I don't know. How long have you lived here, Frank? Oh, about five or six months. She had some kids, didn't she? Aye. How does she manage? She does all right. She does all right. She just put up the shutters and stopped living. My wife left me ten years ago. Warm, Mum. Warm? You know we can't use all that coal, Mr. Machen. Don't worry, I'll fetch you a load home from Pitt. Mr. Johnson, this is Mrs. Hammond. Ian and Linda. We haven't much in for tea. Don't boast about it. Mr. Johnson might get the idea we're poor. You sit down. Ah, then, young love. Oh, you're getting very heavy. <laughs> Tell me, what have you been doing? Been out shopping with me, ma'am. Have you now? Where else did you go? We went to see our dad. How did the match go? Did you win? He played a blander, Mrs. He played a blander. Oh, did he? And have they signed him on? No, yeah, it's not as quick as that. But after today's match, he'll be able to ask anything he likes. Isn't that right, Frank? Frank, isn't that right? I don't know. Ah, it won't pain him to turn you down, you know, lad. Sure they'll give him it, Mr. Johnson. Ah, he'll sail away. He'll sail away. You'll be very pleased. I'll see you then, Dad. You don't mind helping you, do you, Frank? Why did you say that? Well, you know, I, I mean, if I'm in position to help, I think it's only right. I, I think it's right. You don't mind? No. <laughs> don't know what you're talking about. Oh, well, that's all right, then. I'll see you. You know, any, any time at all. I see you, Dad. You play for nothing, then? I got time to pay. Thirty bob. That's hardly a wage. Well, they pay you good money when they sign you on. The old man treats you like a son. I wouldn't say that. I call him Dad because he's old. I don't mean that. What do you mean? The way he treats you. The way he ogles you. He looks at you like a girl. Now, don't come with that. He's interested, that's all. I'd say excited. Well, excited, then. Look, what are you getting on about? He hasn't got much to get excited about at his age. He's done a lot for me. He's never had a job of work in his life. How do you know he's never worked? Because I've got eyes. You just look at his hands. He's got awful hands. They're all soft. What have hands got to do with it? He's got awful hands. I've got awful hands. We're not all women. It's nothing to do with me.
Your husband. I gather he worked at Weaver's Engineering. Who told you that? John, sir. Said you used to know him. He must have told you something else. No. I expect you thought he was very chivalrous of you, helping a widow and all that. You reckon it's nothing to you what people think? It isn't. It's bringing Eric's name into it I don't like. You see, when Eric died, well, all my world went out. He used to say he didn't know where he was living. He used to say, why was I ever made alive? When he went like that, I felt I hadn't been proper to him. I hadn't made him feel as if he belonged. I shouldn't be telling you this, should I? I, I don't mind. No. I mean, you being what you are, self-reliant, all that cockiness. You don't seem worried like Eric was. I... I only mention it because... because I saw you polishing them boots. Is there anything the matter with me cleaning them? No. No, like I said, I don't mind. A thousand pounds. A thousand? A thousand? That's a very large sum for a player just entering the game. I want one thousand down. Now look here, Frank. We're not providing a comprehensive insurance policy. That's a very fair offer Mr. Riley's made. I want a thousand pounds down. And look, we're not trying to put anything over onto you. I wish you'd get that into your head. But we are representing other people. We are responsible for investing their money soundly. I can't change my mind. I feel I'm worth it. What does Mr. Slomer think? My only surprise is that you're discussing such a figure at all. What figure would you suggest? I'm far from convinced that he's the kind of player we want in the first place. You realize, as I'm sure Frank does, that we're not the only club that's interested. We're not here to worry about other clubs. We're here to decide whether we want him. Well, you've had my opinion. Frank, could you wait outside a minute? How goes it, Frank? Have they fixed you up? They're talking about it now. Then let me get you a drink. Whiskey? Whiskey, Bob. I'm Phillips from the City Guardian. 
You needn't take it seriously. Why not? It's only a game of sports, all a game. For Weaver's benefit. You mean they act like that just for Weaver? Well, it's his cash they're dishing out. He's all Slomers. If Slomer hates your guts, Weaver will buy you out of spite. I see you got a bruise coming. No Weaver wouldn't have you up here just to say tata, are you, man? Frank! What do you aim to do, Frank, if we don't sign you? Don't know. Carry on as I am. Can't you change your mind about splitting the payment? No. No, 1,000 down. Well, I'm afraid there's nothing else for it, then. You're not going to sign me. That's it. We'll have to. <laughs> Congratulations, Frank. <laughs> Congratulations, Frank. <laughs> Hold it. That's it. Well, aren't you going to read it? <laughs> I... Well, don't spend it all at once now, will you, lad? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Frank, what does it feel like, lad? I don't feel much. It's all a bit quick. I'm afraid that's my fault. I'd like to get these things settled. I suppose you don't mind. Not now, I don't. <laughs> Did you have any other offer? No. At least, I didn't hear anything. Well, if you do, you'll know what to say. Property of the city. <laughs> Best to make sure, Frank. Fairfax Street. Now, that rings a bell. Yeah. Uh, Philip Hammond used to live there. They got killed at your place. Weavers. I've digs with his widow. Hammond? Hmm. It was Eric Hammond, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I remember the funeral. How did he get killed? Quite nasty. He was working on a lathe. Very careless. He was using a hand file. It shot off and stuck halfway through it. We had half an idea he'd done it on purpose. On purpose? Yes. Funny way to commit suicide. She didn't get any compensation. The case went against her. We gave her a bit. Not much. End of the street or the front door? Uh, End of the street will do. Right. Good night, Frank. Good night, Mr. Weaver. Hi, Dad. What are you doing down here, then? Did you sign? Had they signed your arm? They wouldn't have me, Dad. They wouldn't have me. You ought to have seen them. Around that weaver like a... a pack of dogs around a bitch. I told them what to do with the stinking, filthy bastard money. You haven't done that. I... You're not crying about it, are you? You're not crying. So it was all for nothing, eh? Yeah. Hey, Dad! I was only kidding you about it. I was only kidding. How much do you think it is? You tell me, Frank. You tell me. A thousand quid. Nay. Aye. Do you want to see the check? I could ask you. You and me, Frank. That's us. How much of it do you want, Dad? Oh, no, Frank. What do you mean, oh, no, Frank? 
Oh, no. Frank. Now, Dad, I... listen. I don't enjoy getting kicked about in a football field for other people's amusement. I only enjoy it if I've been paid a lot for it. Now, I want you to share some of this. No, Frank, I don't want any of it. Oh, Dad! I'll send you some of it. No way, Frank. I didn't do it for the money. Johnson called earlier on. That friend of yours. I've just seen him. I mean, he's been waiting all this time. It was hours ago. He likes to get out and about a bit. You should have friends your own age. I have. They've signed me on. Didn't you hear what I said? Yes. You'll be pleased. So will you when you guess how much it is. I don't know anything about it. Go on, never guess. Just guess how much you think I'm worth. Threepence? Oh, careful. Careful. You made a joke. You can't go on cracking jokes like that. You know, you might do yourself an injury. Oh, come on, never guess. Come on. No. Well, I better tell you, since you're so keen. One thousand pounds. Oh. You're a great ape. You don't believe me? Look, I've got the check here in my pocket. One thousand pounds in letters and in numbers. Signed, sealed and delivered, Frank Mason. They drove me home in their car. A bloody Bentley. It's very good. You don't sound very excited about it. It's a bit more than I got when my husband died. Well, isn't that right bloody handsome of you? You didn't have to do anything for it. You mean I didn't have to get killed for it? Some people have life made for them. That's right, Mrs. Hammond, and some people make it for themselves. <laughs> it's about time you took that ton of rock off your shoulders. Don't wake me in the morning, I might be dead. That money. Does it mean you'll be leaving now? No. I don't think so. Get in the fresh air. Uh, Get him into bed. Oh, come on, what's the matter, Frank? She's all, she's all small. Oh, he's all right. It's just full of gas, that's all. Keep her, keep her small. Get home, actually. So bloody small. Let me get him, right? She gives me nothing. She gives me bloody nothing.
Adam not sir, the kind of man that I would wed would be a rugby fullback. I find touch, I find touch, we both find touch together. Oh. We'd be all right in the middle of the night, fine. Oh, the patient's awake. We've heard all your subconscious whatnots, haven't we, Mr. Weaver? Oh, carry What's he want? Macario. Macario! Steady, lad, steady! Did he have a carrier? Macario. Here's a seat. What have you got in there, then? Present. What did he say? Present. Come on. What do you think of it? Have you bought it? Aye. It's a bit of all right, isn't it? You're not going to leave that thing there, are you? Why not? You won't smile when you come for a drive in it. He can take you out on Sunday afternoons now, Mrs. Hammond. Don't worry, you'll never get me to go in that thing. It's like riding around in your own front room. Come on, Ian, let's come for a drive. Don't mind your mother. Come on. Watch your head. Hey, I wonder for his dinner. Look, he's got to get back to school. Don't worry, I'll take him in this. It won't be long. Where are we going? I thought we'd make a day of it. Go for a run in the country. You don't mind, do you? You can't very well get out now, can we? We can stop the car and turn back if you're so keen. 
Look, if it's only for the children's sake, it's worth it. Don't you reckon? Let's go play soccer, Linda. Come on, throw us a catch. Oh. Now look who can't catch. Catch it. Come on, Ian. Come on, Ian. Come on, Ian. I'll tell you. Catch this. Ready? Catch this one. Way up in the sky. Cool off a bit. Come One, two, three. Mom, did you stay here? Yes, I did. Come on, Ian. I'll change my shoes.
Harry, let's have you out of here. Why don't you come in, Ken? Let's have a look and see what you've got. <laughs> I'll come in and show you what I've got, all right. Come on, I mean it. Let's have you out. Get him up here. Len, come on, let's have this horse back. Come on, let's have it out. Let's go, Master. Come on, get him down. Hey! 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 H
gentlemen. Are there any volunteers? Is there anyone at all that can dance, sing, hum, show the muscles do a strip tease, fun dance or bubble dance? Oh, I see we have a few of our city heroes here tonight, including our old friend, Frank Machin. Sorry I'm late. It's all right. Ah, it's all right then. You've been drinking. And you're going to ask me how we got on? Why, did you play football until this time then? Oh, I've been out with the lads. You know, living. You must have had a hard time. As a matter of fact, we did. Come back here drunk. That's no bloody crime. You're not me mother. Me something or other. What are you getting on about? Shh. I tell you, I'd like it a lot if you let me call you Sunshine, Margaret. Sunshine. Sunshine.
wondered where you were. Oh, I, I didn't know you were in. I was just going to make up the bed. I'm off to work in half an hour. I didn't hear you come in. You never know where I am, what with the children on holiday. Go away, Linda. Go away, Lynn. What are you doing, ma'am? Go now to play, Linda, love. Ma'am! Go away, Linda! Go away! You got to say anything. <laughs> you made a right bloody muck up with that loose forward. <laughs> for six months. Better watch out you don't get suspended. Yeah, oh. What else could I do? What else could I do? Look, this big character comes around the blind side every time there's a scrum. I just stand in his way. He's never looking. Stand in his way. I get my shoulder under his jaw. Poof! He goes down like a child. He did. I begin to count the times he came around that scrum. Fourteen times. I must have hit every part of his face. <laughs> you should have seen him. Bradshaw, that's the name. Aye, and the fifteen time he came around, I carried him off. Flat out. Be bloody well and all. I can hear the crack all over the ground. <laughs> uh, just proves I'm a good defensive player. Oh, 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 o
Well, Frank, how's it going? Champion, Mr. Sloma. Champion. I hope you're not giving too many trade secrets away. Have you changed your mind about Frank then, Charles? Oh, now, steady, John. When Weaver first signed him, I thought we were making a mistake. Uh -huh. But I don't mind admitting it. This big lad gives me as much pleasure on that football field as anybody can today. Mind you, it's nothing like the old days, young man. Nothing like. Oh, oh no, no, no. 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 Aye, uh, Ed. I've noticed my photographs are getting a bit smaller lately. See to it, will you? Now then, Tiger. And put a bit of a smile on my face when I'm scoring. Hi, Morris. What's up with you there? Nothing. I'm just waiting for Judith. Cup of stew, Jack. I try and take my pleasures quietly. Ah. <laughs> uh. When I see those frogs gathered around, I just shoot them a line, that's all. Oh, yeah, and I brought you mail down from the ground. Half a dozen. One a week's about my record. Why don't you bring that uh, woman of yours down here sometime, that Margaret? She wouldn't come. Bloody school kids. Why wouldn't she come? She's a home bird. Taking the jam out of somebody's sandwich without paying for it, then? Eh? Me? No, she's a home bird. I've just told you. Now shut up. Watch out with that tiger, Morris. You snap your hand off. No, I can take care of him, Ed. <laughs> Watch it. Hey, Morris. Morris. I've read that. Oh. Dear Frank Machen. Enjoyed watching you play. Rare times I watched the game. Forgive me if... Perhaps you could drop by for a drink sometime this week. Wednesday afternoon might be suitable. Best wishes, Ann Weaver. Ann Weaver? Well, you're not going, are you? Read the PS. PS, this doesn't mean bring any of your rowdy teammates. Does that man be a joke or something? You're not taking that seriously, are you? Why not? I've got nothing to lose. I wouldn't be so sure about that. She just thinks I'm good looking, that's all. Uh, I guess I guess we're here. No, don't come with that, Morris. <laughs> Careful, Tarzan. What are you doing to him? Come on, I want some husband left, you know. <laughs> How do you mean, husband? Why well, hasn't he told you? We just got engaged. Uh, shut up. Engaged? Uh, no wonder. No wonder he's been so rough. Hey, uh, the Lord help you. Give us a kiss, Lord. <laughs> Congratulations, Moritz. <laughs> when are they going to start ringing them bells, then? We're planning on Easter. <laughs> oh, you'll be laughing again yourself when it happens to you, Tarzan. When it happens to me, I'll put up a bigger fight than that. <laughs> uh, they're never satisfied, are they, Morris? Women. They don't frighten me, Morris. They don't frighten me. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Oh, we're having a party on Christmas Eve. You'll be coming, of course. We've got a match Christmas Eve. It's a Saturday, but I could come on afterwards. Well, see you do then. I suppose playing professional football, you don't need a full-time job. Not unless you're interested in the money. Are you, Frank? I like to put it to good uses. Like what, for example? Well, like helping people out, things like that. Is that why you bought such a big car? <laughs> I must say you've been very successful. Well, it's like this, Mrs. Weaver. You see something and you go out and you get it. It's as simple as that. You make it sound very simple. Do you like gardens? No. Oh, Frank. I 
have another drink. Help yourself. You're not playing football this afternoon, are you? No. I like you. You're like a big cat. You're always moving. I've never seen anyone so restless. Come and sit down. I'm not so sure I should be here. Oh, Frank, don't take that silly attitude. Come and sit down. Nothing's happened to upset you, has it? No, nothing. No need to feel awkward. I don't know. Don't talk. I think I ought to go. Oh, why? I thought you were behaving so nicely. I don't think it's fair. Oh, fair. You're not feeling, you know, out of your depth. I might be. Well, there's no need. You can see... Not Mrs. Hammond, is it? Mrs. Hammond? The woman you live with. I lodge there. Whatever way you like to put it, is it her? I've been thinking about Mr. Weaver. Oh, I see. I think I'll go. You're going? <laughs> Look, I think that... There's no need to explain, Frank. You don't seem to understand. Either come in or go. Why don't you say it? Say what? Say you've got some feeling for me. Not yet. But you know me, and how I've been to you. Can't let my feelings go. Not again. Not to have them cut off like Eric and everything gone in one person and, and dead. You've got to give me time, Frank. There may not be enough of us left to enjoy it by that time. Oh, I don't know. You might just want to hear me say it. You, you might feel that's all you wanted and go away. But you keep fighting me. I can't be that bad. When are you going to give us some peace? I come upstairs with you, don't I? But you make me feel I'm buying it. I'm just buying, and I'm not. Well, that's me. That's how I am. I've nothing more to give you, Frank. You don't mean that. I wish you wouldn't work me up like this, telling me how I should feel. If only you'd leave me alone a bit. You're so big, Frank. You're so stupid. You don't give me a chance. What do you want? Hello, Frank. Come in, we won't eat you. Well, Gerald, aren't you going to offer a drink to this wild young man? Uh, a whiskey will do. A 
Mrs. Weaver. They're making a lot of noise downstairs. The last time I opened my house to this crowd, every scruff in town seems to be here. You've been in the walls this week, young man. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. He'll have to learn he has to pay something for his ambition. I think it spoils his looks, though. Does it hurt, Matron? No. I don't feel anything. Take no notice of him, lad. Mr. Slomer's your newest fan. You seem to have the kind of charm that appeals to him. I've noticed I'm not the only person who's found something of interest in Frank. What do you mean by that? Well, Gerald, there was even a time when you were very impressed by him. I carried that boy. It was my back, nobody else's. Are you trying to tell me that you've carried me or something? Yes. From the very beginning. I've played myself into that crummy team. But you just don't appreciate how much help you've had, Frank. Look, am I a good footballer or am I not? The only reason you're in that team now is because Mr. Slomer wants you there. Oh, come now, Anne. Anyway, I think Frank's had enough for one day. Oh, see by my onion, it's 11.30. Time to be going. I like to see Christmas in at home. Don't bother to come down. The young man will see that I don't get into any trouble from your revelers. Merry Christmas. Tell me, Frank, have you been indulging in what I call Mrs. Weaver's weakness for social informalities? Is that your business? That's for you to decide. No. You've been having a good season so far, Frank. Until today. Hmm? Until today. Oh, <laughs> I see what you mean. Still, false teeth can be better looking than the real thing sometimes. What do you think mine are? They look very neat. Are they false or real? False, but they could be real. The false. You're in a tricky position with Weaver, you know. I know he hasn't liked me for a bit. He thought he had some sort of ownership over you. He just doesn't like to see it taken away. Still, you'll be all right as long as I'm there. You understand what I mean? Aye. Right. Well, I wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. You're Frank Machen, aren't you? You look different on the field. Like a tiger. <laughs> you look pale. Aren't you well? Am I a good footballer? Let's go upstairs and find an empty room, eh? <laughs>
It's late. You only just got back. Frank, are you all right? So you've had a visitor. Two. Look at you, look. Who might that be? Don't get so haughty. It's because you don't know everybody in my life. It was Eric's sister and her husband. I didn't know he had one. Here. What do you think of that? What is it? Is that you? It was before I met Eric. When was that then? Oh, just at the end of the war. We worked at Nordman's factory, making bombs. You should have seen us. All women. We had some times. You weren't married then? No. I had some chaps, though. We had some good fun together. Aye. I bet you gave them a right run around. Tell the stories, tell the lies. <laughs> Good God, Frank, what have you done? I... I don't look too good, do I? I've aged ten years. What do you reckon? What have you been doing? Have you been fighting? Oh, I, I got them broken. The dentist pulled out the bits. Six bits, ten guineas. I went the wrong bloody business. Spoilt your looks. So I've been told. By a girl? Who else worries about me? You went to Weaver's then? Hi. You look ill, Frank. You oughtn't to be hurt. Hey, what, what am I going to do with the presents for the, for the kids? Go on. Go on. Well, I'll... I'll take them up with me and put them in their stockings. I've, I've, I've got yours here at all. Shouldn't have bothered. It's what it now. What is it? <laughs> no, no. Leave it till the morning. Don't spoil it. Can you put the light out? I never guessed you made bombs. What? Why don't you come to bed with me? It'll be cold and I need looking after. Thou knows Mother always got to bed with Santa. All right. But just for Christmas, mind. Five quid. Oh, watch your step now. Five quid? Come on, it's only money. He's worried you've got him worried, Morris. Of course, it's a family man now, you know. <laughs> ah, but who's bloody family, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Stuff it, lover, I'll belt you right across that back seat. No, no, just because we've got Frank in a corner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Morris. We'll see what you're made of. There's ten quid there. Oh, oh, oh stop hell. the bus. I'm getting off here. I thought you said you were a friend of mine. I'm a friend of yours. I'm giving you all the money, am I? All right, I'll see you for ten quid. What have you got? 
Nothing much. Two pair. <laughs> of kings. Oh, <laughs> oh bloody <laughs> hell. I'll put the whole stinking bus on him. I'm not greedy, Morris. 30 quid's enough. She'll murder me. Oh, Judy. <laughs> she bloody will and all. Tell her it went to charity. <laughs> you lucky bleeder. Is that what you call it? Come on, Ken, do you want a hand? Ah, man. I hope you know what they're doing with the cash. I can take care of it, Len. Aye. What can it take care of me? Good stuff, love. Margaret! I'm coming. Come on, darling, I've got something to show you. We won't be back too late, Mrs. Farrah. Oh, all right. Look, why don't you pop out and get yourself something? No, that's all right, Mr. Machen. Well, I'll leave it here for you, then. Here she is. Do you like it? It's beautiful, love. Thanks. Wait a minute. 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 It's not... Let's put this on, just for a change. Oh, no, Frank. It's yours. It's here. It's nobody else's. Oh, do be so silly, Frank. I... I want you to have it. Look, it won't bite. Frank, I can't. Well, I can't wear it. Come on. Come on. Just for tonight, then? Just for tonight. At least that's a start. Um, we won't be back late, Mrs. Farrer. Mm. All right, love. Bye-bye for now, then. Take care. Bye-bye. Reserved, sir. Huh, you're right. It is reserved. For us. I'm sorry, sir. There is a nice Look, table. why don't you get lost, love? Could have gone to another table. He was only doing his job. His what? You call that a job? Traipsing about like a 50-year-old tart. Mr. Weaver, nice to see you again. Hello, Tom. Keeping well? Very well, thank you, sir. And you? Uh, will you be going straight in, sir, or will you order in the bar? Yes. Just think we'll have a drink first. Good evening, madam. Hello, Bruce. Good evening, Bruce. Good evening, and to follow, madam, uh, bird, ducklings, nice this evening. All meat, uh, nice steak. Uh, have you any roast meat? Roast beef, madam. Yes, yeah, some, uh, some vegetables? Uh, cauliflower roast potatoes. Thank you very much, madam. And for you, sir? Oh, well, let's have a look. I'll have uh, a nice piece of steak, blood rare, some cabbage and some potatoes. Uh, no soup, sir? Ah, I'll have some soup, but make sure there's plenty of it. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, anything to drink? Yes, I think we'll I'll have... send the wine waiter over, sir. Well, what the bloody hell did you ask me for? I bet he comes back with a plate of fried egg and bacon. Watch you don't burn these whiskers, love. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't have come here if you're going to behave like this. We're paying for it, aren't we? That's all they're interested in. No, it's not. But if you're going to act like a pig. Well, if I'm a pig, what's this load of fat bastards around here, then? Frank, I've told you. Now enjoy yourself. That's what this place is for. I know how to handle these people. How's it going, love? Have they burnt your custard? Really? These old ladies, you know, they're a bit past it. Well, you didn't know quite what to say, yes. Would you care to order now? Oh, thank you. Mrs. Weaver? 
Thank you. Your table's already reserved for you, sir. Thank you very much, Thomas. Is that Frank Machen there, sir? I think she's getting quite what she expected. No, but then does anybody with Machen? Give us the bill, love. We're leaving. Yes, sir. Can I have the fur coat, please? Yes. Poor thing, I feel almost sorry for her. Is there anything wrong, sir? I don't mind paying for what we haven't had, but has he added it up right? I don't think your mate's very good at his sums. I don't think there's any mistakes, sir. Are you sure, no? Quite, sir. Right, good. I just wanted to make certain. Uh, this is for your trouble. Be careful how you spend it. Thank you, sir. Hello, Mr. Weaver. It was Mrs. Weaver, wasn't it, at the restaurant? Aye. Aren't you friends anymore? Who with? Them. <sighs> no, I... I've got no need for them. You coming up? Yes, in a minute. Without Frank, you know. Congratulations! Oh, we'll both be very happy. Hey, what's that? Come on. <laughs> Aren't you going to kiss her? Go on. <laughs> Young girl, makes me ashamed. Ashamed? I'm a kept woman, Frank. How else do you expect me to feel? Oh, my God. It's no good, Frank. That car, me all dressed up in a fur coat, living in the same house as you. If you deal with dirt, you look dirty. People have got eyes, you know. <laughs> 
You feel like dirt. What do you think? It sounds like you want to shove me up to some other woman. I don't need to do that, do I? From what I've heard, you're never short of girls. Well, if you think that, why do you stick with me still? I reckon you'll leave me soon. Well, that's the first I've ever heard of it. Me leaving. I know how you are. I thought you were beginning to feel happy. Happy? I could say something there, but I won't. Well, go on, say it. I'd like to hear you say it. I'd like to hear you say all of it. You don't understand at all, do you? Sell it if it's so sure I'm leaving. You can open a shop soon with all the stuff I've bought you. You've given us nothing you haven't had to. You don't seem to understand the reason I've done these things for you. Of course I do. You do it because it makes you feel good. It makes you feel big. You know how you like to feel big. You don't appreciate one bloody thing I've done for you. I've given you a life. A life better than any other woman in this street, but you will not admit it. Admit it? You must be mad. I can't lift my head up in the street without somebody pointing at me and saying I'm your slut. Who says that? Who says that? Just listen to him. They all laugh at you. They all point you out. Don't you know that? Trying to be different. And they point me out too, Andy and Anne Linda. We're not proper people now because of you. Because you show up every Saturday in front of thousands of them. Because you're, you're just a great A for the football field. Because you want me to be like them. You want me to crawl about just like the rest. We'll just have a look at the rest. Take a right good look at them. Take a right good look at the bloody people around here. There isn't a bleeding man amongst them. You're flat in your back in the world. Crawl them above you. Because they haven't got the guts. Do you understand that? They haven't got the guts to stand up and to walk about like me. Shout as much as you like. But just get out of here. I don't want you in my house anymore. You know you need me. Why don't you admit it? Leave me alone! I won't leave you alone, not until you admit it! Margaret, what's the matter? Margaret. Leave me alone. Aren't you well? Can't you get it into your head? We don't need you. I don't understand her. I don't understand what she wants from me. A great ape in a football field. That's what she called me. A great ape on a football field. That's about what we are, isn't it? She makes me feel like that. She makes me feel clumsy. Awkward and big and stupid. She makes me feel like. She makes me feel like a crush. That crush everything. Maybe you're too rough on her. Some women can't stand it, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Frank. Hello, Morris. I say, you took a bit of a knock last week. <laughs> Reckon it takes something to lay you out. <laughs> I see you do better next Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they think of me, isn't it? A great ape on a football field. They want someone to act big because they haven't got the guts to do it themselves. They want to hear when I am. I am a hero. But she won't admit it. Do you understand that? She needs me, Morris, but she will not admit it. That's all right, but you can't be like that to a, to a woman. Morris. 
footballers. I... I'm not going to be a footballer forever. I need something for good. Something permanent. You reckon it's her? Grab my hand. I can love someone, can't I? Perhaps he's the wrong one. I need her. She's the one thing that makes me feel wanted. I can't lose her. Better see a doctor. I'm just tired. Are you going now or in the morning? I'm not going at all. What is it you want to make you go? I want nothing that you've got. I'm staying. There's one part of my life you've never touched. You mean Eric? He's the one thing you can't touch. And he's the one really good thing. Well, let's all get down on our knees and pray for the good soul of Eric Hammond. The father of this house! How he must hurt you. Well, come on, come on, then. Let's put his bloody boots right back in the hearth! You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. If ever I've seen a crazy thing in my life, that's it. I know enough about you to keep you in a rubber room for the rest of your life. You know nothing about Eric. All me, you know nothing about Eric. I know he put the file through his guts. That you made him so happy he went and killed himself. You want to kill me? Eric is dead. You understand that? Eric is dead. You make me feel I'm nothing. I want you. No, you want to crush me, but I won't let you. I'm the one thing you can't have like everything else. I want you. I want you to go. I need you! I want you to go! I want you to go! I want you to go! Take your word for it. I don't mind who I take, I'm not you, see. <laughs> but any trouble and no thank you. That's why I give you that queer look when you came in just now. I always give you that look if I think people might cause trouble. I find it puts them off. Does Johnson still live here? He went a while ago. This is yours. Give your hand to you, Aki. You got a lock on that. It'll be all right. These two alarm clocks are a bit nippy, but they're nice when you know them. Down here for a holiday? Uh, 
Now, the bar's at your car out there. I meant to tell you, Wacker, the nippers are mustard round here. It'll be all spare parts if you leave it too long. If you want it cleaning, I'll do it for a dollar. Is that you? Is that you, Frank? If it's Mrs. Hammond, she's been taken ill. She's in the hospital. I've got Linda and Ian with me. What? Mrs. Hammond. She's been taken ill. What is it? It's an attack. Some sort of an attack. I've got Linda and Ian in with me. Where is she? It's the county. It was just a couple of days. She's badly. It's a hemorrhage on the brain, I'm afraid. Is that serious? Serious? Oh, yes, it's serious. I mean, she won't die, will she? I'm afraid I can't say. She's weak. She's weak all through. To be frank, she hasn't the strength. And more important, I doubt if she even has the will. Where is she? I think you'd better leave her now, Mr. Machin.
it's nothing. It's nothing at all. It's nothing, Margaret. You're all right. You're, you're all right. You're going to be all right, Margaret. You're going to be all right now. You're safe. You're safe, Margaret. Margaret. You can't go like this. You can't leave me. You mustn't be mean. Gone. Sorry. No. No, she's not. 